Over the years, QRadar has earned the reputation of being the best SIEM engine for correlation. And that's not only because it has a ton of rules already built in, so you don't have to perform searches and do things, the, the rules are there, but also because it has auto detection, so when the logs are sent to it, it auto detects it and they begin uh, to work for it. But also the, the quick time to value that Curita brings. Uh, it's very easy for the reasons mentioned before and to, to, to get it to begin to yield uh, results uh, to you. Also the fact that combines log and flows uh, makes it very unique, but I can go on and on and that's not the objective of this video. But what is other things that Curita does not have? For, for one, it is not cloud native, which in this context means that it cannot grow and shrink with demand. So if I have a big search, a long search to perform, I need more hardware. And when the search uh, subsides, then I want to release the hardware so I don't have to pay that cloud provider for it. Uh, the searches in, that you do in QReader, when you search manually, are made in AQL, which is a type of SQL. And we all know now that pipe-oriented languages are, uh, are much better for searches in security than SQL, which are for records. Uh, the fact that it's built on Java has been, you know, more than uh, what, 14 years, 15 years ago, I believe 13 years in the Magic Quadrant, so the Python did, did not exist at that time. And I've never seen accusing Curator of having a sexy looking UI. How all that has changed today. So we're going to see that with UAX, that is a cloud native Python based, great performing, great good looking UI, etc., combined with Curator either on cloud or on prem, can overcome those issues and give you a, a, a actually great experience. But one thing that has also become very, you know, shocking to people when they begin to do security with cloud things is that if I want to do this in the traditional way, for example, I, I have CrowdStrike with uh, resides in AWS and I want to send all the logs into CrowdStrike. Well, <laughs> that's going to cost me because I, I will be incurring into egress charges because you know these uh, these uh, cloud providers do not want you to leave their network. So if you get data out, they they, they will charge you for it. And the same thing for for well, Azure and Google Cloud. So if you have a, a an instance of Splunk in one of those clouds and you want to send logs to Curator, the same. If you have uh, Microsoft Sentinel because Microsoft gives you for your negotiations some Defender this and Defender that for free. Well, uh, are you going to be sending all the logs there? They, that's going to cost you big. Are you going to send them here? It's going to cost you. So the motto of UAX is leave the data with the data reside. I'll go and get what I need from it. In this concrete example that, I, that I'm recording from my Curator uh, on-prem here on my lab, we have some mail logs and some Windows logs coming from uh, a machine that is in Azure, but the Falcon agent is sending all the logs to CrowdStrike, so I don't have any visibility into the CrowdStrike piece. But armed with that and other telemetry, QReader was able to find something bad, which it does so well. And now what it did is it created an offense, and offenses are now flying by using an app called Offense Forwarding. So you no longer have to send them to SOAR individually. No, they all come as alerts into UAX. And when they come into it, the magic of UAX begins to show by doing some sophisticated machine learning, scoring and handling, you know, enhancing the data with, uh, with threat intelligence and a few other things to determine whether a case will be open or not. Because not every alert is going to open a case. But when it does, not only creates the case, but also assigns a priority from critical, high, medium, low, etc. So we, you, can, you can actually prioritize your work on it. It's a, it's a great way of uh, making sure that you look at the important things uh, first. And by the way, the same can happen from that Splunk instance that can send alert into UAX or, or Sentinel or, or any other 
entities that uh, IBM has a, a, a connector for. But the magic becomes more apparent when threat investigator, investigator comes into the picture. So when you look at a priority, probably because it's a high priority one, and you click on the threat investigator, well, then the threat investigator is going to do okay. I'm going to get all the artifacts that are into that particular offense, uh, IP addresses, host names, usernames, uh, hashes, etc. And then I'm going to ask everybody that I have configured in my system that has connectors for to say, well, tell me everything that you know about any one of those artifacts. Hey, you cross strike, do you know anything about this? And also you can send it to Sentinel Explorer and even curate it itself. Because in the offense, there were, in this case, there were 18 logs, but there might be more data that curator has about it that didn't, that is not part of the offense because it wasn't indexed. Uh, uh, for that. So I want to get all the details. And the beauty of this approach is when you get that, that those results back from any one of those, that has basically no impact on your egress and ingression charges because the data is circumscribed to these artifacts that I'm looking for. And for those, even if I have to pay a little bit of a, a few pennies here and there, uh, it's far than worth it because I want to have all of all that data into my... Uh, into a centralized place for, for the investigation. Again, I have not moved the data from where the sources have them. I just have taken the relevant aspect of it because one of the alerts trigger threat investigator to look for those. Just for completeness, I'm looking at Curator because with UAX, you don't, once you configure Curator, you don't have to go into the traditional UI of it. And we can see that this is the offense that, that, uh, it's going to open a case into uh, UAX, and we see some IP addresses in here. Uh, let's actually take a look at all those uh, events. So we, we see that there are some mail logs. There's, there's a Windows log in here. Notice that there is a username, and there's a uh, host name, a Windows machine name. There's a source IP, 10.0006. And so that's the data that went into UAX. Let's take a look at. Uh, how this looks into UAX. When I'm here in the UAX uh, cases interface, I see that this is the the uh, the case that was open. But notice that it's been labeled already critical. So already the tool did the scoring and then enrichment of the data and determined that this stuff is is important for me to look at it. So let me go in there. Once I go into it. Uh, and I already did this before the recording of the video, I click on Threat Investigator and it, it, it goes and perform a search. Let me go to the whiteboard to explain this better. So when Threat Investigator gets all those artifacts and it's going to be asking CrowdStrike, Curator and others uh, for what do you know about these? Well, it's going to do it using a language called STIC and this is our concept of federated investigation. Uh, there is a common language, a common way of expressing things. More on that later. We'll, we'll, we'll use it later manually. Uh, but it did this automatically, and there is there are conversion or translator between sticks and what cross strike speak, between stick and SPL for Splunk, between stick and KQL for Sentinel, between stick and AQL in Curator, and so on and so forth. So uh, it, it performed the translation back and forth to get the content of that particular information. And we can see here that there's data that came, you know, as, as a consequence of that from CrowdStrike. We see a bunch of events from CrowdStrike. That's good. There's from Curator, and this is what is called Curator Data Lake because it's 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 this is what what is beyond the the actual alert of it. There's more data here. Uh, there's data from the Curator alert that we see. Remember that malicious IP that we saw before. And this, there are two users here, that's Edgar Johnson again. So all this was retrieved and I have all the good data that I want. And I can search it in more details at the end of this video. But let's say that I don't like this way of looking at this stuff. It's, I want to see it more sequentially, what happened first and next and so on and so forth. Well, the tool reconstruct all that 
in this very good looking view, right? What happened on the Windows machine, what happened on this IP address, on that IP address, and we see how the, the process uh, went, right? If you want to reconstruct it. Here is the MITRE information that you know that we are so, both the curator uh, that, that we know on-prem or, or QROC and as well as UAX, very MITRE oriented. We get a network diagram. In this particular case, it's actually very simple. Uh, you know, these these are some um, some of the IP addresses that have, we have seen that Windows machine talk to, and here are the those connectors that we have, those data sources that Curator is talking to. So uh, notice that it went to uh, the for to Curator doing those stick to AQL queries, and found uh, 40 events that we saw some of them. And uh, it also went to CrowdStrike Honeypot, where we have that uh, Windows machine exposed and being attacked and has the Falcon agent that uh, made all that detection. So these were the two connectors that retrieve a data. You can see that there was no data from the others. And these are not all the connectors that, that IBM has. There are, there are many more. I don't have the time to tell you all the goodies that are in here, but let me highlight some of the most important one. Uh, it, it, that machine learning generates recommendations for you. I mean, you should, you know, make sure that you get these things uh, uh, on your deny list and you, you, that machine that was, that we saw compromise, uh, you need both, uh, actually, yeah, we saw this in CrowdStrike as well as the, in, in Curator, you need to call re-image that box most likely right and we can go into here onto the everything evidence and look into the artifacts and we see how this got enriched and it knows that that, that particular ip is, is bad you know but let me go back to the whiteboard to explain something else now in uax i have all that data into a column oriented extremely high performance by the way speak natively uh, kql and stick uh, but I have here all the data that I need. One in my click house, and I also have the capability of doing federated search via stick to other places. Let's actually exercise that benefit right now. Here from the welcome screen from UAX, and I'm going to go into Data Explorer, and I'm going to perform a search. And the search that I want to do, I'm not going to go into the events because while UAX can ingest logs and be a data lake on itself, uh, right now that data was coming from from alerts. So I'm going to uh, use instead of the events table, the alerts table. And the look ahead is going to help me here. And I'm going to go back uh, five days ago and let me find that Edgar Johnson guy that we saw here. So we're going to go and put another pipe uh, here and say where user, yeah, it's helping me, is equal Edgar Johnson. Let me uh, erase all this. This was part of the, of the original comments on the sample that it was given, and I'm going to give it a go. So that is looking into all the data that was ingested and we got data back. I click here to view results. And we see that data that came from Curator in here. But, okay, that came with the offense forwarded, but uh, what about additional data I may want to look upon CrowdStrike that might not be part of this case and I want to look further into it. Well, for that, we have the option to use federated or stick. And we're going to select what sources do I want to have. Remember that we have uh, several sources in there. But the one that I want is this one, the CrowdStrike. Uh, so I'm going to deselect them all and I'm going to select just the CrowdStrike honeypot only. And now uh, I'm going to go ahead and make my query. I don't know anything about sticks, but I don't need to. I just go visually here and click there and then uh, start a query and I can see the most obvious one domain name email you know all these or uh, as you can see I was playing with hashes before if you scroll here on the other this I don't want you to think that only you, you are limited in stick to those there are a plethora of things 
and here's where I got the the actual file hash and uh, I have one of the file hashes that we saw in the curator offense and I'm going to look at in here from curator I can see it from the KQL because this data went remember as I showed you it went into the database by virtue of that alert carrying the data but what I'm going to grab is this uh, file hash in here and I'm going to paste it right here and I say okay that came from curator what do you know about this file hash cross strike on that query and very quickly comes back and say you know well this is all the data that I have that has a relationship uh, with that and I can expand uh, you know all those all those fields and I, I want to if I want to look for that file hash I did, did control F to find it and it's right here and it's also in eight other places where are those other places that it was actually found well, we can actually see it here. And the, the same host name, uh, host IP address, and the same Edgar. Uh, you know, so, and this is how he, he was able to stitch together this thing. And the beauty of it is that we left the data with the data reside. We avoid incurring into those ugly and expensive egress charges that's the beauty and the vision that now is a reality in UAX